In this space section called Go Virtual, we would like to share with you the future, 3D art. This new technology offers a whole new eclectic and artistic language that allows us to express in a wider range of creative possibilities. It has caught the attention of many fashion brands and film creators with the use of CGI. As our guest today, we have the honor to present Alexei Severin, a Russian AR VR artist living in Italy who presented Infinite Scroll, and Lucas Club, a 16 year old Australian 3D model creator and founder of his own company, Club Visuals, presenting Believe. Today, we have the pleasure to present them at the Baif Go Virtual interview. Hello there, this is Flor Vivas from Buenos Aires and welcome to Baif. This is Go Virtual and we would like to introduce you to our two guests, Alexei Severin from Russia and Lucas Klubi from Melbourne, Australia. We're going to talk with them about... Hello guys, welcome. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you for having us. Have you met before this, uh, this interview? No, but I've seen Alexei's work uh, before. It's pretty impressive. So. Thank you. Yeah, I also saw you were you work for um, Mercedes Benz Fashion Week Russia. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everything is virtual right now. Do you think this virtual world has increased during the last months? Oh, definitely, of course. It was inevitable. The situation, the whole lockdown, only served as a as a catalyst for to make things go faster. You know. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, like. You know, people can't do real photo shoots with real models. So this is almost the only other option, really. So tell me all about this skill that you both have, AR and VR. Would you please share with us what is AR and VR and the difference between them? AR is augmented reality, which is a mix of like real life and then the 3D universe complements it. While VR is completely 3D. Yeah, we just add that uh, VR is basically 100% immersive, while augmented reality mixes real world with digital augmentations. And how did you get into this field? Where did you gain your, your, your knowledge? Uh, for me, it's, it started a long time ago as a with an interest in you know graphics and 3D in general. Like I've been playing with 3D software and also on Photoshop when I was like I don't know 10 years old, 12 maybe. It was just stupid things, simple things, but uh, it all started then. And then it, I had this interest throughout the years when I was studying actually completely different things and related to, to technology, to graphics, anything. And that. all these years I came to the realization that I this was what what I wanted to do. It was maybe six years ago or something when I just completely changed my, my path and I just dedicated all, all my time to, to 3D and to, to technology and uh, well, VR and AR only make a part of this so first I started with you know, traditional 3D just modeling, animations, you know, rendering, product visualization and things like that but then you realize that interactive game agents, that's what I use mostly these days. You can make very interactive and dynamic things and they're much more interesting than just static images and animation that was pre-made. And as for where I got the knowledge, it's by doing things, for being very passionate and just trying, to, trying things like working on different projects and reading a lot of stuff and watching you know, courses online, there's actually a lot of useful materials out there. Actually, I would say there's too much information. Years ago, the, the main problem was, you know, to find the information you needed. Now it's it's more about find the right information. It's filter, filtering out the noise and finding, you know, the best courses, the most recent information, the most, you know, valuable knowledge. I actually started very similar to Alexi. I've always had this interest in graphic design and the arts as a whole, and I've also had quite an interest in technology. It just almost made sense when I found out about 3D and this whole different universe to combine those two and merge it into this one medium and, uh, I, you know, I'm all self-taught, all learns off like YouTube and online forums. It's one of those things that you really like, once like you have the motivation to do it, it all just 
comes and it's very progressive and once you start learning online and you, you really can't stop it's just such an endless you know like endless road really and do you have your own communities of people who work in the same field or you just work on your own very individualistic way oh uh, well for me like i like to work by myself but then also for example like i also do like to make ar filters i created a community and it's like almost a group chat and it has i think it's almost at a thousand right now but a bunch of creatives and these people that make filters and it's just a community just to help each other out and if we have any questions we can type it in the chat and it's just a really great community full of a bunch of like-minded and passionate people so uh, I often like to bounce back off them and it's just a really healthy way to get critique. And also you can teach someone else with your own skill. Yeah, so I have uploaded some tutorials online, kind of the basics of 3D art, and I even created a mini online course, and that's available on a service called Skillshare, and uh, I have some tutorials for free on YouTube. So I always like to uh, kind of give back and help. When I started, I found it quite hard to find uh, this valuable information, so when I decided to learn those skills, I just wanted to give back. What do you think fashion is finding in this new technology? Why is fashion getting interested? How can it help fashion? Well, because it's a, it's, an, it's a great opportunity to expand the realm where you can show your work, to communicate with your audience, and especially now when you can't have physical shows. But even apart from this, it could be a great expansion to what's already happening in fashion. Like it becomes more and more democratic and self-aware and responsible, not just talking, but actually doing things in terms of sustainability, zero waste production and all. Technology only helps these ideas to spread, so there's also this trend of digital fashion for example sometimes it's necessary to have a physical garment physical clothes because there are a lot of cases especially on you know on social media and there are even whole startups or companies like digital shops who where they sell digital clothing where you just put it once virtually you put the image on your social profile and that's it you don't even need to produce it and lucas what do you think uh, so with fashion, I almost see it as something, it's always reinventing itself, it's always constantly evolving and changing, especially with like this recent focus on sustainability in fashion, just really works well with the whole concept of high fashion and fashion as a whole. So I think these two different mediums that like, just combine really well, fashion in the virtual world, there isn't any limits. Well, obviously the real world, there's some things that we just can't do, put simply. Yeah, there are things that you can just you, you just can cannot produce physically even if you wanted to. It would be so expensive, right? Yeah, yeah. Tell me a little bit about your models, Lucas. How did you develop this this beautiful girl called Candice? She was like the first virtual model I created. That was my introduction to this whole 3D realm. When my skills evolved, so did her. And I almost grew with this virtual avatar. It's very odd how I had this linear experience with this model. I kind of see her almost as like a modern superhero. She stands for what she believes in and she's very powerful and ethereal in many ways. What does Candice believe in? She's definitely more activistic. For example, like the Black Lives Matter movement. Candice's beliefs are also my beliefs and club visuals, my company's beliefs. Using the platform that I've created with this model and using it to spread awareness on these issues. Do you have any other models in mind or have you developed others? Kansas is the only one that has her own like separate social media pages, although I do have a few models that I like to showcase throughout my work. And did any company or, or fashion label meet? Candice already or, or she's brand new in the in the fashion market? Uh, so there's been offers but at the end of the day I'm not going to do something that I feel like doesn't align with Candice's brand so I've had to turn out a, uh, turn down a few things but uh, with the Fashion Week Russia I just felt like it matched up perfectly with Candice and what she believes in. And... Alexei I was a little curious about your experience at the Venice Biennale. How was your experience and doing what exactly there? Very exciting, exciting time of my life. And Biennale di Venezia is one of the biggest exhibitions of contemporary art events in the world. I've been uh, just discussing creative things with uh, this 
with these uh, artists, they call the Recycle Group. So they are the ones whose name was on the door of the show, so the idea behind this, uh, this event. And so And they are my friends, and I, before, like a, a half a year before, we just we were discussing the possibility of doing something together, you know, I was, at the time I was more into virtual reality, and uh, I was, we were talking about 3D printing and stuff, stuff like that, and then the idea for many reality came up, and at the moment I actually didn't know very much about that. Several months later, I was full, full on doing you know, the reality, I just, uh, you know, re researched how it was, how it was, it was possible. Actually, uh, they wanted first, they wanted to do an unofficial project, like uh, they only participated in the BNL say, a couple of times, you know, but they wanted to do, you know, like a kind of a pirate inter intervention without, uh, you know, the, not going through all the official, things like you know just like a, 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 a rebel kind of exhibition and we started doing it it was you know, we positioned virtual objects in different parts of venice especially where the biennale was held and uh, we had a special app if you went to a particular place and just pointed your camera you saw virtual artworks in, in motion and we had all these statues like blocks of ice with just a polygonal symbolic blocks of ice with people sticking out of these blocks and when you pointed your telephone you saw these figures coming to life there's not much the uh, that kind of uh, art exhibition is one of the first ones. How amazing! Did you have any 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 contact from from a client, for instance, to do a new project after that experience? Well, definitely yes. Uh, not specifically art. Actually, we continued our collaboration and the guys recycle group. We continue to do projects constantly, like several projects a year. But also, I work for you know design brands like furniture brands. You know, you know engineering like a, a lot of different, very different, very diverse uh, areas of, uh, of and, and, and industries, and also fashion now. I mean, Amazing. And Lucas, are you working in a new project now? Uh, no, not really. I'm just uh, kind of have these like small freelance jobs here and there. I'm just kind of giving myself like a bit of a rest period as I've had some uh, pretty busy projects, but I can't really talk about them too much currently. How do you see yourself in the future, Lucas? What would you like to run your own? Well, no, you do have your own company. That is a fact. But what is your dream regarding your business? Uh, well, like short term dreams is just to expand the business, uh, maybe to uh, just like kind of work on my skills a bit more and hone on the craft and then later on I'll just be setting myself up. Yeah, like ideally I'd like to run like a AR fashion, uh, like full length fa fashion show and this is a bit of out there but like with hologram technology and I've seen prototypes of that, that's definitely a far future and uh, I believe then that technology will be accessible, that's a, more of an ambitious goal and that to be in collaboration with maybe a tech company or maybe a fashion big company or something like that. There was a wonderful fashion show that Alexander McQueen did, one of his shows had a hologram designed by Nick night and show studio with Kate Moss and that is unforgettable congratulations Lucas you are you're really really very talented we need more of you here thank you so much and Alexei what is your goal your final goal in your field would you like to be the most important Russian artist in the world or what brand would you like to call you I, I, I like the idea, yes, of being the, the most famous. We're talking about this technology as something exotic, something it's going to become a part of our everyday lives. That's my goal. I want to bring it closer to uh, to, to, to reality, to, to make it part of you know our everyday lives, and that it's not some strange thing that uh, you know happens somewhere, and you know just for the for the geeks. That that's what I want to to assist and make it real. I don't know, maybe some make some platform. Amazing. Lucas, we would like to know more about your working process uh, when you did your collaboration with the Believe company and your virtual models. How did you do the, your collaborations with each of these participants of this project? Yes, yeah, so uh, I was originally in contact with um, the garment, like the label and the owner of the label. And she told me her plans and uh, what sort of concept she wanted and the direction that she was thinking of. And then um, 
I teamed up with Mary. So I met Mary through the designer and uh, she was creating the garments and as soon as she'd create a garment, I'd create uh, the video for that garment. So that's kind of the order we went in and then the designer of Bol she had a friend that was a musician so then he created uh, the soundtrack for that and I just think it was a really beautiful way to combine all these different mediums of like music and fashion and uh, like these garments and uh, 3D artwork and just to kind of combine all of them into this cohesive piece and being that we're all from different parts of the world time zones were, was a big issue so, uh, you know, for them when it was morning, it'd be night for me. So communication was definitely uh, a challenge, but um, at the end, you know, we got it all done on time, which was really relieving. How do you see the future of VR and how do you see the future of VR related to fashion? Uh, well, it, it could be, well, it, it's, it's definitely there. It definitely will be developing. We will have more uh, virtual events, especially when when all these devices became uh, become more accessible and more more widespread, you can uh, you already can do can do this. But the problem is that uh, you know it's not everyone has a has a headset. You can organize entire events virtually, and you will feel like you are there. <laughs> you can basically organize any event like this, like a fashion show, a concert, a football match, whatever. Like if it's happening before your eyes. Amazing. It will give us another point of view about consuming what we choose. Maybe we can invent our own realities and dream of a better world with you guys helping us to do so so thank you it's amazing to meet you and thank you Baiv, for inviting me to this wonderful experience of getting to know such a wonderful new world thank you again thank you thank you Baiv. yeah thank you so much everyone this has been a really awesome opportunity and thank you so much floor for interviewing alexi and i yeah this has been really great so thank you thank you so much